Hi guys, I'm Annabelle and welcome to Meepo Village. Today we're going to be doing a full run through of Templar The Secret Treasures. Paul Nolan asked for this one, so here it is. I hope you all enjoy it. Join me at the table and let's play Templar. Alright guys, I got the game almost set up. There's a little bit of setup that we still have to do, but for the most part it's, it's good to go. Uh, we are playing a two-player game today, and when you play a two-player game of Templar, you have to play with an imaginary friend, <laughs> Raphael. And Raphael gets his own deck of cards, which is mixing two of the other sets that you didn't use together. Uh, taking out the Bells card, which will it'll make more sense uh, when we play, but it's the one that um, let us replenish our hands. Uh, and this has been some mechanic that's been done in other games where um, you play cards from your deck and then there's a card that lets you take the cards back into your hand. Uh, other than that, we start out here at the entrance and then for the NPCs, uh, I followed the re um, recommended setup for them because there's no one else to make the decisions here for me because uh, we're supposed to take turns and decide where these people are going to go. So I put the bad guy, Severus, I believe his name is, over there in the ch at the church. Um, the particulars or the door that's blocking this uh, path over there and uh, the guy that scores his points, the abbot here and the spy follows the abbot outside with us. Uh, we start at zero points, of course. Uh, we've got our decks. We start with five rings, uh, two of two different kinds, and then one of one different kind to make it five. It doesn't really matter which ones you start with. Um, I guess you could technically you could say that you could make a, a smart decision if you populate the other board first, because you can see what's out there. But I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't feel like being smart. <laughs> uh, this is our resource pool, so that's these things that we're going to get throughout the game, uh, and that's what we're going to be putting out on the board. But you understand all that as well later. And then this is uh, kind of like the ducks. We have a card, Maria, who's the sister of the abbot, that kind of brings the goods in, the 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 things that were lost. She collects them and then brings them to us. Uh, so we have to populate this and the way we do it is we're going to put, uh, this is the starting one where the ship is, and we're going to put three there. Uh, but you can only have one of these chalices. So if I if I would have gotten two chalices I couldn't put the other one there. Uh, so let's see. We got two books over here and a ring. So we're going to put three in the first three. Okay, and then four in the other ones. Tons of rings on this one. Chalice, a book, a ring, and another book. And get a chalice, a book, a ring and another ring on that one. And then we'll keep this one around because we are going to be replenishing at some point during the game. Uh, that's it, I think we are good and we can go to gameplay. All right, so the game plays in a, a, a series of rounds and the way the game ends, there's two ways to end the game. The first one is that when we go replenish the harbor or whatever this place is, uh, we don't have enough to replenish. That will trigger the end of the game. And the other is if a player manages to put a treasure one of the books or rings or chalice in each one of the 13 different rooms, which that's a room, that's a room, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's 13 rooms total. Uh, if we manage to do that, I uh, the times that I've played it, it's usually because the bag gets empty, emptied out. But we'll see how it goes today. Uh, what else? And well, we have to pick. So the way it works is uh, we, we both, each of us, each player, uh, which wouldn't be just me, uh, picks a card uh, at the same time simultaneously and does not reveal it, but then reveal this, reveals them at the same time. And then the starting player, which is going to be over here, yellow, the, uh, does the action on the card and then the blue player and then rinse, repeat. With the uh, AI, we are going to start using him at the, uh, during the second round. First round, he, just, he does nothing. And he doesn't do much, really, so it doesn't really uh, mess up with the, with the flow of the game or, or what we're doing here. Basically, he stops us from playing some cards, and you'll understand that when we start going. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a starting card for both players, and then we're going to get started. Okay, so everybody's picked their cards. 
and boom and boom and I know that this doesn't make any sense to you now but when we start taking turns it'll absolutely make sense so we're gonna start with yellow like I said she's gonna play Maria this game is language independent so you're gonna notice over here that there are symbols and that tells you what the actions are and Maria tells you that you take your player uh, token your meeple and you're gonna go to the harbor you're gonna pick a harbor place and you're gonna get uh, the stuff that's there and then this card is going to be uh, put on the on um, Maria's not the yellows discard pile. She's going to take her token, and what goodness do I want? Well, chalices score the most points, and books go after that, and then rings. So if Maria wants to go for big pointers, that's probably a good place to start. There's two books, which are three points each, and a chalice, which is five, and then a ring, which is two. Uh, over here, there's a book and a chalice. I think we'll let her do. We let her go for the big points. We're gonna we're gonna start that. There's there's I mean technically I haven't gone through all the strategies in the game, but there is I think that you can actually also just uh, win with going with the lowest thing, the rings, and you'll see why they can get scored multiple times. But in the meantime, what we do is we grab these four, and now we're going to transfer them into her color. So I've got a book, so I'm going to get a yellow book for her. She's gonna put it here, and I have a chalice. So we're going to get a chalice and then I have, oh, I have another book. So let's get another book. Yep. And then I have this uh, hexagonal ring. So let's bring one of those and she's already got three of those. So uh, now she's got tons of things that she can go and populate the board with. The tokens that I grabbed, they're going to be out of the out of the game. I put them back in the box. We're not going to see them anymore. Uh, we don't get to put them back in the bag because remember that's the timer for the game. But Maria, I mean not Maria, <laughs> she play Maria, but the yellow player is done, and now the blue player is going to play Lucas. So let's see what Lucas does. Okay, so Mr. Lucas is going to let him move up to three spaces. He has to move at least one, and then he can put one of the things that he has, either a chalice, a book, or a ring, in a matching spot. So three movements, he starts over here, where does he want to go? The, the church is a place where you want to put rings. Uh, the reason being uh, that if, if you don't get to score them during the game, you'll get to score them at the end of the game regardless. So you kind of want to put your rings there if you can. And you see a lot of spots, all these stars are spots for rings. Uh, but I don't know that he can get there with three movements. One, two, three, yep, no. Nope. And this way, one, two, three, nope, no way he can get all the way over there. But he's got to move it, move it, move it. This is the guy that scores his points. So you know what? I'm going to go one, two, and kind of stay, uh, well, that's probably not a good place because there's not a lot of places for rings. Fine, we'll go one, two, three. We'll do it like this. And I can put up to three things, and all I got is are rings. Now here's the here's the thing. See these tables that are that enclose the rings together. You have to put rings of the same, I guess, brand, <laughs> same symbol together. So I wouldn't be able to put those two rings together. Uh, this table, because it has a square shape ring, is going to need more shapes, uh, more square shape rings there. But over here, I have a spot where I can put two of these hexagonal ones and uh, I've put three of my things out which means that soon I'm going to run out of things and you need to put things out because that's how you're going to score points when this guy comes and looks at them and see how how, how well you've placed them uh, okay but that's the end of the first round like I said the first round the AI does not play so we're going to go on and pick another card all right so I've picked a card uh, He's going to play Anselmus and he's going to play Joshua. Now there's something important. I, as a blue player, wanted to go and get me some stuff because I'm running out of stuff. I only have two rings left and that's it. But the problem is that in order to do that, I have to play Maria. But she's already played Maria and I cannot play a card that's on somebody else's top of the discard pile. And right now that's the top card of her discard pile is Maria. So even though I wanted to go to the docks or whatever this is called, the harbor, <laughs> I don't remember the name, uh, I couldn't play Maria. So I went with Joshua instead. Uh, and over here, let's, uh, we, we uh, go back to Maria's turn, who's an active first player. She's always gonna be first, which I think gives her a little bit of an advantage for some of the cards that we have in the game, but yeah, I didn't make up the rules. So let's go check out what jo uh, Anselmus is gonna do. Okay, so Mr. Anselmus is going to let her move one and drop three things in a room. And you, you, you're going to say to me, wait, Maria, I mean, the yellow player is not even on the board. She's over there in the ducks. 
Yes, that's true. She's got to come back during this turn. And now there's two ways that she can she can come into the abbot or the abbey. The abbey, I think it's called. She can come in through the main door like we did before. Or there's a side door over here. And she can pick. And she's going to pick to come in through here. And then remember, uh, this guy's going to let her move one. So that's as far as she's going to get. But then she can drop three things. So I think we're going to leave the rings for the, for the room where I told you rings are really cool to drop off and we're going to fill this place with chalices and books and we definitely want our friend the abbot to come and check out all of our cool things that we've dropped off here now that will go on the discard pile and then Joshua Joshua's gonna let him move two and drop off two things which is some, one of the things that you want to do the most in this game so you want to stop start dropping off things uh, around the board especially because at the end of the game you're going to get points for having stuff in different rooms the more rooms you leave stuff in the more points you're going to get and there's an end of score uh, sheet uh, card that's going to help us with that but in the meantime two and drop off two uh, I could go here and drop off my two rings but I think I'm going to stop there because um, uh, I, I'm close to the abbot. If I go here, the abbot, when he moves, if he moves, <laughs> I'm sure he's going to move, uh, would have to get out of this room and not score. But if I put it here, I can have him come here and score and then come here and score. That's kind of what my plan is. And I can drop off two things. So I'm dropping my two rings uh, at the same table, which there's a lot of circular rings that can be added to that table now. But with that, we're done. Now this round, because it's the second round of the game, the AI is going to start playing with us. And really, all he does is he's going to uh, flip a card, and then whatever card he has on the discard pile, it's another card that we cannot play during our turn. So we're done with the round. Benjamin cannot be played. Anselmus cannot be played. And Joshua cannot be playing next turn. But we got to pick a card, so let's do it. All right, picked my cards. I'm gonna go with yellow. She's going to play Severus, which is that guy right there, the bad guy of the game. So what Severus does is wherever he's at, you cannot score points. He tells you right here. And when I play him, I'm also gonna get a victory point. So first point of the game, I can move him up to three spaces. And then wherever he's at, he's going to block scoring. So I can move him up to three. I definitely don't want to move and leave him here because I wanna be able to score my room, but that's one two and guess what three so right now Severus is right here and I, I think what the the issue with him is that he's not part of the Templar um, missionaries or whatever so we can't let him see that we're hiding treasure in this abbot that Maria is bringing to us um, so when he's here we cannot put anything in this room we cannot score that room it's, it's untouchable he we cannot let him see what we are doing all right but uh, Next up is Maria. You already know what she does. So the blue player is going to come out here and pick some stuff because he, he's emptied out. So I think I want to try and pick one of these four uh, tokens because, of course, they'll give me more options. And there's better scoring here or I can go the ring uh, side of the of things. I, I think since Maria is going for the big pointers, I'm going to try to go for the small uh, points. And so you can see what strategy works best. I really don't know. <laughs> so we're going to get a few rings. We're going to get two of the circular ones and two of the hexagonal ones. So two circulars and two hexagonal. And they're all, they're the same. Just, uh, they're, they, they score you the same amount of points. It's just a matter of, um, well, you'll see when we score. It's kind of cool. But for now, just know that, uh, if, if you have different ones then you can, you have to put them in different tables. If you have, well, actually you can't put different ones in the same table pretty much. But we're done, so let's see what the uh, Raphael, the AI, is going to play. He played Anselmus, so nobody can play that one. So let's pick another one. The yellow player is going to play Joshua. You've seen him before. He's going to let us move two and drop two things off. And he's going to go into Discord pile for next turn. So I'm going to move up here to the ring section, <laughs> to the church, and drop off two things. And I have a ton of rings, so I'm going to put two of my rings in this table that uh, they have to be uh, the same shape. So I've done that. And then a new guy coming up, there is Remiges. Remiges? I'm not sure, but it's it's the abbot. So we're going to start scoring. Uh, he's going to move two, and then he's going to score points wherever he ends up. As long as Severus, the gray piece, is not in that room. Okay, so 
I want to move him obviously to the room that's full of blue stuff. Now once he moves, we have to move the spy. What happens is the spy kind of follows Remigius, Regim, whatever his name is. Um, he follows the abbot. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want the abbot to go back to the same place. He has to continue moving in a straight line. Uh, so that's kind of the way you, re and let me tell you, I always forget to move the spy. Hopefully I will remember today. Uh, but now we're going to score this room. And every signet ring is worth two points. So I have four points, one, two, three, four, but then you have to flip uh, exactly one ring. So I'm going to flip one ring to the scored side and I cannot score that one again, but I can score the other one again in another turn. Uh, the books and the chalices, they get flipped. They don't get to be scored twice. That's why they give you a little bit more points. That's it. You've seen it. Now let's pick another one. Well, let's go to the AI and it's Stephanus that cannot be played. So let's not pick Stephanus. Yellow player cannot play Stephanus and cannot play Remigius. <laughs> I cannot say that name. Cannot play the Abbot because that's on his discard pile. So that's why I'm getting, I'm, I'm putting those two so I don't get confused and then I'm picking from these. Okay, so over here, uh, yellow player is going to play Lucas. Lucas lets her move up to three and drop off one thing. And remember, I'm thinking we want to uh, start spreading the love. By the way, last turn when uh, he moved the abbot, he had to come back from the harbor. He can't stay there. He has to pick whether he's going to start here or he's going to start there. I'm going to make him start there. Maybe he can drop off some rings at some point or continue uh, so that we can continue moving Mr. Abbott and he can continue to score for me. Um, so that was last turn. But this turn, um, the yellow player is going to move up to three and then drop off something. She still has rings. And I want to spread the love one, two, three uh, on this uh, abbey and put things everywhere. I can only leave one thing though. Uh, probably not smart to leave. Well, you know what? We will. We're going to drop that ring there and that big table that is now uh, have to be filled up with more circular rings. And that was her. And now the blue player is going to play Anselmus, which you've seen move one and drop off uh, three things. And I forgot that uh, he was over here. I can drop off three things and the only choice I have is to move here. Uh, so I would have loved to gotten over, have gotten over there. I have two of these and we'll drop three things. Okay. And with that, we go to the AI. So now it's Lucas, but Lucas is already here. So if that happens, if the AI gets a card that's already in the discard pile, he continues to draw. Uh, okay, and then there's another one that uh, has a special rule. Those are the bells, which are the ones that let you pick up cards uh, on, onto your hand. So when the AI gets the bells, he reshuffles everything and uh, draws another one for his discard pile. So let's see. And it's Lucas again. Wow. <laughs> don't tell me it's the bells again. No, it's not. It's Joshua. But no, yep, yeah, yep, that's fine. Joshua can be on the discard pile because that's not Joshua. Okay. And now we pick another one. All right. Made our choices. The yellow player is going to play her bells. And the way it works is that we're going to replenish the harbor. And then we're going to bring all of the cards back to our hand. So in order to replenish the harbor, we look at the card that's on our discard pile. So the card we played last turn. And there's a number on the top right hand side of the card and that's how many new tokens we're going to put out. So because Lucas was here from last time, we're going to put five new tokens out. We always started the ship and it's a book so it can go there. That's one. Two is a ring. Three is a ring. You have to go in order. Four is a ring and the last one is a book. Okay. We've replenished and the game is now shorter. <laughs> and then the yellow player takes all of the, her cards or his cards back into their hand. And then Severus, Severus is on the move again. He's going to move three. I get a point to, for moving him. And then of course he's going to block whatever room I put him in. Here's my point, put him on the discard pile. He can move up to three, one, two, three. I think that's convenient just in case she wants to score that room. And also I move out of the way because I want to score. And now I don't, I'm not sure that I want to score that room because this girl's going to get a lot of stuff. So maybe I should have just left them there. But that's, you know, mm, my issue is that she can probably move them back. She's got all her cards in her hand now. So let's, let's leave them there for now. 
Okay, and uh, that was it. So AI, it's Joshua. Okay, so we can't play Joshua, we can't play Severus. Okay, so yellow player is going to play Maria. So off she goes to get some new stuff because she's running out of stuff. Uh, there's books, there's a chalice. She likes, she likes those chalices and those books. Uh, this one only has four, so no matter where she goes, she's going to get four max. So let's go here and let's pick up this goodness. She gets a book and a chalice. She gets a square ring and a circle ring. Which she didn't have any of those. Okay, and uh, this guy's gonna do a bells action. He's gonna be putting eight tokens because Severus was there last. A lot of tokens, let's go. Oh, and uh, bad timing, I'll tell you why, but that's good that it happened. One. Two, there's no chalice there, so that's allowed. Three, four, no chalice there. Five, and then this full, that's full, that's full, so we skip them. Six, seven, can't put a chalice with a chalice, so we'll go here, and we, we continue from there. And eight. All right, we've replenished our eight. Now, here's why it was bad timing on his part, but he wouldn't have known because, remember, we pick our cards in secret. If there's a player out there in the harbor, they get to collect the stuff right now for free. So, yellow player is getting two more things. A chalice, which she loves, and a square ring. So, chalice and a square ring, and that was just a freebie. How convenient. And then the blue player gets all of his cards back into his hands. And he needs to go and find some stuff because <laughs> he's been getting them for free, but uh, Blue Player has not been getting them for free. All right, we go to the AI and it's Anthemus, so that's fine. So no Anthemus and no Maria. Okay, so Joshua for the yellow player, move two and drop two things off. She's over here. She's going to start this way because she wants to spread out the love. And she gets to move two, so she'll go one. Uh, how many things can she drop? Two. Sure. Two. She'll go in this room and she'll drop a book and she'll drop the only chalice that can go in this room. So there we go. And now that's on the discard pile. Now he wanted to go to the docks, but Maria was on the yellow player's discard pile. So blue hasn't been having much luck. So we'll go score. We'll move the abbot. So the abbot can move up to two spaces. So we're just going to move one. And remember, the spy's got to follow him. And now that he's here, he's going to score all this. So two for each ring. So that's six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have to flip the one on the table, uh, and I, we flip the one on this table. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. Nope, it's, it's not correct. They only have to flip one of their, their rings that they are they're scored, so uh, we'll leave it like that, or you know what? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Does it matter? No, <laughs> I don't think it matters. Same amount of room will be taken by the, the, the signet rings. Okay, so he's done that. Now the AI. It's Benjamin. Nobody has Benjamin, so we're good to go. All right, yellow player is going to use Lucas, who's going to let him move three and drop off one thing. So where do we want to go? Let's move. Uh, let's spread the love. We're trying to spread the love around here. Uh, one, one, uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And we've gotten to that room, and we are going to drop just one thing. So we'll put the chalice there. Uh, we do want to spread the love, and I'm trying to leave the rings for the church, which I'm probably going to have to uh, walk in there soon. The problem is Severus is there, so I can't drop anything at the church right now. And then he needs to go pick up some stuff at the harbor. So let's see. We said he was going to be going for rings. So I see a lot of rings here. Uh, let's do it. Oh, wait. Here he would get only four things one two three four five here here he would get five things so i think it's kind of smarter to get more things even though it's less rings so let's get the books let's get three books and two rings okay and he gets a circular ring and a hexagonal one he needs to be careful he needs to start looking because he's running out of some of the rings all right and the ai 
it is this guy okay nobody has him so we can't play any of those so we made our decision so Severus is getting out of the way so I can move him up to three and I get a point for that so there's a point and let's move him one two and three and uh, that way he won't be able to score that again okay and then Blue player is going to use Joshua to move two and drop off two things. He's got to come back. So he's going to also try and get in as many rooms as possible. So he's moving one and he's going to drop off two things and two. And he'll drop off two books. Okay. And AI, it's Stephanus. Okay, everybody's picked their cards. So... Here's this guy. It's going to let her move one and drop off three things. So she's going to drop off a few rings. Three rings to be dropped off. There's one. There's two. And we'll drop one of these off. And we'll put it here because we have more that we can uh, fill it out with. And actually, let's fill this up. These are the first tables to go, of course, because um, they kind of trap the other player into playing those specific rings. And I am, the yellow player is the only one doing rings. <laughs> okay, so, at least at the church, which is important. Uh, as I said, they, they, we, we, they will be scored even if we don't score them during the game. So it's a good investment. And then Lucas is going to let the blue player move three and drop off something. So he's going to go one, two, and three, and he'll drop off a book over there. Okay, and then the AI, it's Lucas, but there's a Lucas out there, so we go again, it's Maria. So no Maria this turn. All right, so yellow player is going to play Benjamin, uh, and you haven't seen that one. Benjamin is a little thief that lets you play three things, grab one, and drop it somewhere else. And it could be your thing or your opponent's thing. During the last round of the game, once the end of game has been uh, started or activated, um, you can only move your own things, but right now I can move anyone's. But my plan is to move my own things. I'm going to move down here, one, grab a book, two, and drop off the book. Because, again, I want to be in as many rooms as I possibly can. And then uh, the next player, a blue player, is going to play uh, his bells. So we're going to populate the board again. He wants his cards back in his hand so he can do more cool stuff. So this one is full, one, full, two, three, four, this one is full, five. Okay, five things, and we get all of our cards back. AI, it's Remy. Juice. <laughs> Remy Juice? <laughs> uh, it's that guy. It's the abbot. So no scoring next turn. Let's see. What do we got? All right. This, uh, the yellow player is playing a card you haven't seen. I'm trying to play all the cards so you can, you know, check out what everything does. So this is Stephanus. And I do believe that he is better for the first player, especially in a two-player game. Because what he, what he does is he moves up to two. You move your, your piece up to two, your meeple up to two. And then you score for every other piece that's not yours that's every other wooden piece that's not yours that's in that room so i feel like a, as the first player you know where things are because you're the first one to go so things are not going to move so all she's going to do is move one and then she's going to score two points because there's two wooden different wooden pieces here in this room so that's what she's going to do and then uh, blue player is going to use maria so he's going to come over here and uh, let's go get some more rings yeah Let's do it. Let's clean up the ring stall right here. Okay, so he's got a round one, two hexagonal, and two squared. Two squared, one round one, and the last two hexagonals. So he doesn't want any more hexagonals. And let's see if he can start dropping these off. <laughs> All right, we're back to the AI, and this time no Porticus which the Porticus lets you move the door, which we haven't done. Okay, the re yellow, yellow player is going to move uh, the abbot. He can move up to two. So one, two, we're going to get some points, and then the spy follows. And then uh, five points for the chalice. We have to flip it. Three points for the book. That's eight points for the yellow player. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
But then the blue player is also here, so he's also going to score. So he scores six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he has to flip one of the rings to the scored side and only one. So you see how if you go for the uh, less scoring points, you might be able to get, uh, like now there's still, stir there's, there's, there is still four points to be had there if he, you know, ever scores again over there. And then he's going to use Joshua. He's going to come back. He's going to come in here. And he's moving two, one, two, and dropping off two rings. We'll drop off these two. One here, same shape. Okay, and then the AI is Benjamin. The yellow player is going for bells. It's going to be putting seven things out there. So one, it's a book. This one is full. Two, three, ring. Four, a chalice, but there's no chalice there. Five, a ring. Six, we're skipping that one because it's full. And seven, another ring. The rings of power are here. Okay. And uh, that was, that was, uh, yeah, that was her bells. She gets all of her cards back into her hand. And then Lucas is going to allow blue player to move up to three and drop something off. So let's go one, two, three, and we're going to drop of oh, a circular ring because it has to match the one that's already uh, at the table. Okay, so now the AI, whoops, and it's the bells as expected because he's running low on cards. So we shuffled again and we get some Severus. Severus. Okay, so no Severus is moving this turn. Uh, I think we're going to have this one go to Maria. So he, she can pick up some stuff, and then can't play Severus. So not this one. He wants to continue to drop off rings everywhere. Benjamin will be the one. Okay, so Maria, she flashes over there. Uh, I see a child is in a book. I think that's what we're going to go for. So a book, a chalice, and then a round ring and two squared ones. Okay, now our friend the blue player is going to move three. Actually, he picked Benjamin, that's not right. Let me see, he wanted to drop off things. I don't think he has any, yeah, he has this guy. Can you play that guy? Yes, he can. That's what he meant to play. Sorry. Okay, so he can move one and drop off three things. So let's move one over here and drop off three different rings. Actually, let's, let's keep a little bit of variety just in case. So two can go there and a round one can go here. Yes. Okay. And the AI is Stephanus. All right, moving on. All right. Yellow player is going to use Joshua to move two, drop off two. She's coming over here and moving two, one, two, drop off more rings because at the end of the day, I think she's the ring master. <laughs> let's see, two things. So let's get, uh, let's, let's, since I have a lot of these squared ones, I'll put this one here and I'll put the square one there so that uh, the next one has to be a square. And then uh, over here, He's played several because I need him out of the way. One, two, and three. We'll put it here with that yellow book and yellow chalice, just in case. And I get a point for that. Okay, and AI is Benjamin. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, first, yellow player is going to be moving one, dropping three things. So I think we are going to do that over here because that room is going to be yummy. So we'll drop off a book. I mean, uh, not a book. A uh, uh, ring. Oh, there's no no space for books here. Hmm. Hold on. Is there a better place then? This I can't get there because of the port. Because I can only move one. So it's either here or there. Uh, these have already been scored. There's still spots though. But the abbot is here, so they would have to move away and then come back. 
Mm, okay, fine. We'll, we'll leave it here. So we have a spot for chalice. We have a spot for book. And we have a spot for another book. And we'll put it like that. Okay. And over here, bells. So it's eight. Eight things that are going to be out in the harbor, ready to be picked up. So one, a book. The ship one is, is full. Two, a ring. Three, a chalice. There's no chalice there. Skip this one because it's full. Uh, there, there cannot be a chalice there. So we move on to here, four, five, six, full, full, seven, and one more, and eight. And seems like we're running out, but there's still, there's still one, two, three, four, there's like six or seven left in the bag. So we gotta move it, move it. Okay, the AI. Oh, and we get all of our cards back, of course. AI says Lucas cannot be played this turn. All right, so I'm going to move the Porticus. Uh, first of all, because I have never moved it yet. And second, because I kind of want to trap the other player. Let me show you. So with the Porticus card, I can just move this uh, anywhere I want on the board. And then I get a point. Don't mind the point. And then I can pl place this anywhere. And I'm thinking of putting it here so that the blue player cannot go out this way anymore and come to the church. I don't know if that's what he's planning on doing. Actually, I do because it's me, but you know what I'm saying. But now he's stuck going this way. Uh, and then over here, we're going to Maria. So he's actually leaving, but she didn't know that. And uh, are there rings anywhere? I see three rings over there. I see three rings over here. Uh, but they are circle, circle, circle. I don't have enough circles. I only have one left. So I don't want those rings. So that's no good to me. Uh, I want squared rings. Running out of rings. <laughs> How did that happen? Squared, circle, and I won't, won't be able to collect this. So I think that's my better choice. So I'm going to go here. And I get two books. I get one square, one of each, but I only have two kinds, so that's all I'm getting. These go in the box. AI, it's Joshua. Let's pick another card. All right, yellow player is going to get a room scored. So you can move up to two, one and two, beautiful. And this guy is gonna follow, and then we're gonna score over there, which is all mine. So I think that's really gonna give me an advantage. Each, each chalice, which I have to flip to the scored side, is five points, so that's 10 points. And then every ring is two more points, so that's 14 points. And I flip one of them to the score side. 14 points, just like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, by blue player. Good. Good turn right there. Okay, and then blue player is going to be able to move uh, one and drop three things. And he's over here, so he's gonna enter through the main door and drop off, let's see, two books. And I guess we'll drop off a ring. We'll drop off this square ring right there. Okay, and AI is Benjamin. Okay, no Benjamin out, so let's do it. All right, so um, yellow player is going to do the her bells. So seven more things. Let's see if that triggers the end of the game. She kind of wants it to end. <laughs> I don't know. Does she? Uh, she's she's ahead. So and with all those rings that are not scored, maybe she can win. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all rings, and she's done it. She was supposed to put out seven, but uh, we don't have seven. So we're going to um, have uh, one more round, and then we're done. So uh, all her cards are going to be in her hand, too, which is nice. All right. And then Joshua is going to allow this one blue player to move two and drop up two things. But she's, he's just over here. He's going to drop two rings because he knows that the uh, end of the game is coming and he better spread himself out to get points for being in different rooms of the uh, abbot, abbey, abbey, not abbot. Okay, and now it's the porticus that we cannot play. 
the last round of the game so remember if we use benjamin we can only pick up our own things but i don't know if we're gonna use benjamin we need to what are we going to do where's our yellow player she went to no she's over there okay Ooh, she got herself stuck <laughs> Okay, so yellow player is going to use this guy to move one and drop up three things because she wants to make sure that these rings are at the church. She'll drop the book too, but I don't think it's going to matter um, because it won't be scored. But the rings will. Let's put them right here. Actually, let's, let's fill this table up. <laughs> well, not this table. These are individual tables. Okay, and then last card of the game is going to be Lucas. He's going to move uh, up to three spaces and drop up one thing, which is all he's got is one thing. So we just need to go to a room where we haven't been before. One, two, three. Nope, we've been there. So let's just go here. One. Uh, oh, we can't drop off things because he's there. Hmm, that's unfortunate. And this path is blocked. And we filled out all of this. Oh, we're not going to do much. We're not going to get uh, anything of uh, value in this last turn. That's too bad. I should have thought that better. So he should, he's just going to move over here and drop off a ring. It's not going to make a difference because the, if they haven't been scored until now, they won't be scored. But at the end of the game, we do get two points for each unscored uh, ring that is here in the uh, church. So yellow player, look at all those. <laughs> he's getting two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18 points. The book does not score. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think I said 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, correct. And then uh, the blue player has two, so that's four points. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> I, I don't think... Um, Usually when I play this game, it's really close. Yeah, the scoring is really close. But I think today the yellow player really took off. And then there is a handy dandy uh, player aid, player like a card in each of the player's colors that lets you know uh, according to how many rooms you are in, how many points you get. So let's check out the, the blue player, see if he can catch up. He's in one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine ten rooms so here's the number of rooms ten he gets eight points i don't think he's going to catch up one two three four five six seven eight he made it to thirty and then the yellow player is in one two three four five six seven rooms so that's another four points one two three four so definitely <laughs> beat by a lot mr blue player but fun game Easy to play, easy to teach. I mean, it's, I guess it's not as easy. You have to put some thought into it. and um, But, but it's, it's still a fun, nice, uh, simple euro. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, guys, there you have it. I hope this gives you an idea of how to play Templar, the secret treasures. A nice, fun euro game. You can play with your family if you enjoyed this video. I ask you to give us a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to Meeple Village and join us on Twitter and on Instagram. I will see you all on the next one. But until then, may you play more games. Thank you.